photography is not about photographs it's about ideas it's unfortunate that a lot of us yes are getting into the positions based on our skin tone but are we capable of producing the quality at that level the industry themselves undermine the idea of what it means to be a, a photographer. Oh yeah, definitely. We have to bring back that culture by also informing our photographers on how to how to be raised from a business acumen point of view. In order for you to stay sharp as a content producer, you need to shoot your own body of work. When you don't have those jobs come in, when you don't have all these things, this body of work that you are going to be remembered for. When it comes to being on the top of the, your game, I think sacrifice is, is the number one thing. A belief system helps you break away from your reality because if you if you believe in god and and you believe in ants and your ancestors and what is meant for you and a belief it helps you also start believing in yourself a bit more what up buffet to hi i'm john baloi hi this is someone next hi guys this is toby we are listening to b-roll 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 with cyril zoom Welcome to the show, brother. Um, this is Bureau Conversations. Um, you've heard a little bit about the podcast and what we do, but just to give you a little bit of background, this is a podcast where we uncover stories of inspirational individuals like yourself. Mm. Um, I shared my story of why I started the podcast, and mm. the reason why I invited you here is to mm. celebrate you and give you your flowers. Thank you. Man. When I started out in the industry, you were one of the people that I looked up to and that I still look up to just of how you do your work, mm. the way you even conduct yourself as a human being. Mm. I literally do not have an intro for you. Uh, yeah, well, so we make it up as we go. Let's yeah. make it up as we go. But just to kick it off, please could you introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Okay. So thank you for having me, sir. I mean, you know, you speak about my career. You know, when you came in, even old men like me shook. <laughs> <laughs> Made us all run a little bit. Sir. What are you talking about? You know, um, you know, I'm very honored to to actually have uh, be or be in the space, especially finally getting to meet you as well. I followed your work, especially when you just moved into job and some of the stuff that you did in KZN, because I mean, that's where um, a lot of like the film you're doing a lot of the film yeah. uh, movies then um so because obviously i mean i mean I, as much as we don't we don't say anything on the ground but we watch each other because i mean you must know that this is our space this is our world these are our you know our rugby players our soccer stars you know our superstars so we we, we make sure of that and i'm i'm very very honored to actually be in the presence of your light man um so to introduce myself I think um, I I would just want to consider myself uh, a you know a storyteller, an archivist, you know, um, as somebody who celebrates the the whole idealistic idea of of photography in its full essence. A lot of the time, I remember when also coming up, there was a lot of people who transitioned from photography into video, um, uh, or directing. Yes, I, I direct once in a while, but I really, really, truly want to stay in the space of photography because I think, you know, mastering the art of, of this one discipline is, is, is infinite. You know, there's so many ways to see one particular thing, to capture mood, energy, sound, color, you know, and putting it into one frame still excites me, you know. So I would definitely be considered a photographer. So you can call me a photographer. But. <laughs> <laughs> I really love that. And you know something I took yeah. away from what you said now is mm. photography itself is a medium that still needs mastering on its own. You know, yeah. you said there's a lot of people that transitioned from photography and they went into video, but you've stuck into photography because you're trying to master um, that field on its own. Mm. Um, this segues to my question where... Photography serves, serves as a medium mm. for telling stories and communicating. And you've been able to do that very well. Mm. I want to touch on a moment um, in your career that literally changed and said, this is what I want to do. What, what changed you to say, this is what I want to do? What got me into photography was truly just growing up in a household with a photographer. One of the best photographers I still consider. Um, in, in our country today and that hasn't been completely celebrated like your Ernest Coles or, or, or your Alf Komalos who haven't really got into the state status of like an Annie Leibovitz in our country you know what I mean we're 
and schools they 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 look through their work and archives but they don't really appreciate the idea of you know looking at somebody especially who has the same skin tone as you who's come from the same sort of backgrounds and the same sort of language and 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 storytelling and narratives and utilize that as your your basis of your background in order for you to start producing your own personal voice i've been very fortunate to to have that you know when so uh just a little history um about me so i started photography at the age of 13. Um, my, my dad used to give me all of his old cameras and i'd go out and shoot characters in high school to a point where uh, my s- high school stopped uh, hiring their own photographer and they used me as cheap labor. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, right? So I was doing like school photography and, and that sort of stuff. And then I migrated or I, I evolved into a published photographer in newspapers. And my da- I used to use my dad's name as part of my byline. Because I was 16 years old and I was shooting back page babes for the Sowetan. So, I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you know how controversial that is for a 16 year old to pick up 21 year old women, go sure. to the beach and take photos of them. Sure. Um, so, so that was my history. That's how I started getting into like um, understanding, capturing portraits and capturing mood and energy and reading into like body language and lighting um, through that. Um, and then, you know, because my dad was a, a war photographer. I also looked at photography different because at the time a lot of a, a lot of black photographers or African photographers weren't given the space to work commercially. Sure. You know, if they were either forced, it's like black female photographers in, in our time right now, if you think about it, most of them either in art space or or in journalism, but you don't really compete a lot a largely with them against in your Mzanzi magic, sure, yeah. you know, studio stuff. And and you ask yourself why is that? It's because, you know, they have been, you know, cornered into certain places, just like the male black photographers when I started out, the guys that I was competing with and myself, I mean, we would we were only a handful of black photographers, you know. Commercially, that was later on. But but ideally you'd either be in eventing you know, journalism or art. There was, you know, uh, until the one day I went into, I used to work for um, like T-shirt. You remember the craze of the T-shirt brands and we used to shoot for the T-shirt brands. And I would shoot some stuff in the T-shirt brand until one day I went into uh, like one of these uh, Peroni commercial, commercial shoots. I was actually picking up gear at the gear house. Okay. I get there, the gear house, I'm picking up my gear. And I'm looking at the like setup. I'm blown away by the setup. I'm like, wow, this guy's got a brolly. He's got all these like. He's got a digital back. Um, uh, Mamma Mia! Not what the time was a uh, Hasselblad. It was a di- uh, a, a analog uh, Hasselblad with a digital back, so it could transfer instead of negatives. It was going straight into his computer. Oh, wow. Then. I went and the, guy, the photographer was actually having a smoke at the time. I walked over and then one of the agency guys were like, oh man, you're a young black guy. Come, come and see what we're doing here. You know? yeah. When I get to the table, all of the images on that guy's table were mine. As a reference? As a reference. No ways. Kid you not. Head to t- from one, all 10 images on the reference table are mine. So would you say, and sorry to cut your story, yeah. your story short, would you say that one moment was one of the moments that solidified that I can't do this as for a living? I was like, but why am I not doing it? Why okay. didn't they call me? Yeah, yeah. Why didn't they call me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, years later, I understand that the reason why they didn't call me. Sure. You know? But I'm, I'm grateful to Anthony from, from Key Space, um, who stays in KZN now. I will always be indebted to that guy in my career because... Truly, I wouldn't have understood lighting if he didn't open his mouth and also just gave me constant tips on me getting to, to improve my lighting technique. Sure. So, but before, so the reason why I was collecting gear is because at the time I was shooting for pop bottles. I was, um, I, I was into eventing, but I always had this eye of, of an, a way in which I felt like Africans needed to be represented, you know. From a lighting perspective, you know, I just didn't think that the camera was sufficient enough to capture our skin tone, our our, our melanin glow, 
our um, our true essence of ourselves because everything if you if you go into the history of photography and you look at when black people actually got recognized um, on film you would re- you would go into um, you, you would discover that it was created by based on Fuji Fuji gold max okay. was a film a film that was engineered to to tell the difference between different woods oh so what happened was um, marketers at the time they who were selling furniture when they take photos of the furniture they couldn't tell which one is a dark wood and what is a light wood okay that is how we got rep- that's how we got recognized as our skin tone on 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 um, on film and that's when maybe the films they, themselves started changing to adapt to no then what happened was then they because they used the thing called the Shirley card and back in the day they would use this this card to um, obviously for different blacks or different skin tones but ideally the gold max was there to help um, absorb that texture and light sure for black skin so if you think about that and then also the representation of us going forward you would also understand why our IDs if I put my ID next to yours you, the camera doesn't pick up texture Oh, have you look just look at your actually haven't simple, looked at it like simple thing as an id for of id photo on your on your driver's license sure. you'll see that that black and white image that's why a lot of guys can use their different driver's licenses amongst each other because it really didn't re, it didn't really capture who we are as individuals sure yeah. and it still doesn't do it till today it actually doesn't just doesn't capture no. skin tone it doesn't capture much or texture yeah because you must know that if if you are able to think about, I mean, I shot for I shoot for the EFF, and sometimes, and I was sitting with uh, Andile, who is just now a uh, Fuji Fuji film um, photog- photographer. You know, shout out to him for that. Shout out. Um, he was telling me something so simple. He was like, you know, the color red. You know, after shooting EFF, and he was like, wow, we could actually see the texture of red and black and white. Is this, for, is this from the recent photos that you shot? Yeah, from the recent stuff that we... And he, he said that, you know, he could see the actual color red and he realized that he can tell, he can start uh, photographing color in black and white and it has like a texture. But mm-hmm. why is that so for, for our black skin? Sure. If you take a, a photo of a white person, it picks up its texture. You can literally see the dimples and everything. Whereas for us, it will read as oily or shiny the camera even to a point where we've had, as photographers have adjusted our eyes to seeing highlights in certain places sure yeah but actually, actually that's not highlights that's where the camera fails to read information you know? oh sure so with with our skin tone with our skin tone no way so in terms of like the retouching i mean we do, i mean yes there's some there's a bit of detail because cameras are becoming a bit a bit better but you're saying that area it, it's actually not reading it do you think about it if you when you shoot with the harsh highlights right now even yeah. now you're looking at my face right yeah now, already because you're you're trained you're, you're trained to see highlights you can already see white sure in certain areas sure sure that white is actually your you the the camera failing to understand how to capture the detail and detail wow so so with with that said you know that's why i needed to use lighting so if you look at my style of photography i needed to use lighting to help me um engineer that texture because once i added lighting into my cameras i um, into my my frames that i i composed that's when it would start picking up highlights correctly um and also the texture correctly of of black skin tones I really love the journey you talked about. I mean, you firstly introducing your father and talking about the history, even when you started out in the photography industry. I think we have a similar journey to some degree. So, nice. yeah, my, 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 my late mother um, mm. was a photojournalist. Oh, snap. Yeah, so I mean, that's where I sort of picked up where I would go through books also. And I'm like, mm. oh, this is a beautiful photo. And she'd be like, it's not just about the photo, too. And mm. she'd tell me the story. And then I'd read through the story. And then I get to understand the photo. I think that's how. I started reading photos because of photojournalism mm. books. But yeah, we have a similar journey so, in that one. Man, because, you know, that's the number one thing that the, that my father always made me understand is that, and I think very similar to what your mom was I, identifying, it's not, photography is not about photographs. It's about ideas. Yeah. You know, once you convey, if you convey I, ideas in, 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 a, in a concise way, because sometimes, you know, as a, as a content or an artist, you know, you you think about 
what's inside of you the ch- the the boy child or the child in you wants to express a certain thing and articulate yourself but how do you do that through your images sometimes you have sleepless nights yeah thinking about how composition can can narrate a, cer- a certain story that you'd want from it so it's not it's not about photo- photograph photographs for me it's actually um ideas you know I really love that and it's so true it really is about ideas um you've been in the industry for some time and you've yes. seen it grow um what do you think has changed now from when you started out that you would have wished you had back then maybe what I had back then I think now it's just what I had back then I wish I had the money <laughs> right <laughs> because now the money comes easy uh, a bit easier you know when you set your prices now they don't even I think especially now that I cut the dreads as well <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't know what it is about dreads and you know when you send that invoice it just seems like <laughs> <laughs> it's like two different things. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I can't do it no more. <laughs> uh, so, because once, once, I'm telling you, the minute I cut my dreads and I put out those invoices, people were like, okay, he deserves that type of money. Like, oh, yeah. That was his thing, you know. But, but ideally, the one thing that I do think that a lot of content producers have grown to become is short-sighted. Is... Um, a lack of ideas um, you know a lot of the time I get I get the fact that because back in the day we I would used to sit at a magazine store or CD warehouse and I'll go through albums of ideas and concepts and now they say it's easier because now you have everything at the touch of a button but I also think that has taken away that the idea of creating your own voice for sure now a lot of people just duplicate they don't they they no longer because images are supposed to be used as reference you know but now guys just copy and paste the same thing you know you go through pinterest you go okay cool this is what all, all i want to do i mean i'm also i'm also to blame with that but when it comes to the concepts of i mean when i'm doing client work because a lot of people want to just see stuff that they've seen and then just duplicate that sure and then there are times where where you're given the opportunity to create, you know, um, and, and you have the time and opportunity. A lot of people just don't do that for themselves anymore. They wait for a client to do that for them. So then, so what is supposed to be a personal body of work becomes an album cover. I see what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. now we're not exhibiting anymore. Now we're not putting our stamp on a particular style and a look and feel. The reason why everyone follows Dave Ch- Le Chappelle is because he had a signature move, you know. Now guys aren't making signature moves. Now they want to make all the moves a signature move. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's moves, they're, they're yeah. a signature move, yeah. You can't, and you, you can't, you can't um, differentiate yourself from, from your competitors like that. Do you, you know? think social media has put a little cloud on that in differentiating yourself? Because, you know, you, you come from, the, I guess, the background of like, the reporting style where mm. photos are about archival and mm. guess you know ideas too but it's more about archiving, archiving than just getting one photo and out one photo yeah. and out like we're seeing now so do you think social media i you know i don't want to you know like my driver always says doshan he says uh, you can't you stop blaming everyone you know what i mean as much as I'd like to blame social media, but I then you know when does it stop? Do you blame it on the money too? I True. mean, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, like, what you mean, yeah. So, so at at a large per, uh, perception, I think the reason why is because a lot of photographers are ill-informed. I think a lot of them get into the business. Yes, surely some of them, most of them, the ones that I've met, were self-taught and all of that stuff. But if you look at who they were taught by, is by somebody that was never in their positions. Sure. You know what I mean? They they aspire to these, you know, European aesthetic, uh, you know, guy. And then you would ask themselves, but why has their career not lasted as long as others? It's because they haven't found their voice in... Because they, they can't... It's, it's like watching Top Billy. You know what I mean? All your life and then trying to figure out, but why can't you... Because Top Billy... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It didn't show you the rest of Africa. Sure. Yeah. 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 It showed you it, it, good, right? it, it just showed you the best parts of it, but it didn't show you the 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 the, the, the spaces and how you had to survive. Sure. A lot of a lot of uh, you know a lot of photographers you know I mean I was I, I love 
let me put it like this my dad i remember when i started i was also like in the clubs and all of that but as a photographer you know my dad would used to say to me look when you on an assignment or you working on anything be like quote unquote you know like a white these white boy photographers yeah. don't they yes they've got money and all of that stuff but they fo- they so f- solely focused on on creating the work i mean why i say this is a there's a an incredible photographer i love um his name's andre uh, uh andre and we went together um um I'll, i think i'll just i'll add i'll add the, the link to his work uh andre solely his lighting technique i mean if i show you that guy's lighting technique it's like you understand why why guys like that got get given the money you know sure. so chris saunders as well i mean chris saunders you know these guys don't spend their time popping bottles bro sure <laughs> i mean they're sitting they're grinding like they studying the craft till today chris saunders gets flown out from paris to come shoot in south africa for south african content so they look past the cyril they look past the lyrics and they still go and hire him because he is dedicated at what he does there's no there's no gray area around it you know it's unfortunate that a lot of us yes are getting into the positions based on our skin tone but are we capable of producing the quality at that level mm-hmm. reason why is because the minute we get off to that level we've made it we've, we've made it, it. We've now made. now we we only move when there's 20,000 in the but are you producing the quality of work yeah to to demand that right ask yourself because i mean if you look at the work and your price range is it does it make sense sure <laughs> just because you shot a nissan or a thingy commercial did but does the quality of work match to your counterparts globally <laughs> if you not look just, at not, it, just, yeah. not just your friends anymore yeah, yeah. no 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 i'm talking about because the thing is if you know before i used to compete with the likes of liam lynch and chris saunders and those are the guys i used to see myself competing with then i got to a point where i saw that now the industry is now giving guys anyone the opportunity just to shoot some guy who just wins a competition out of nowhere he's now a photographer sure yeah you know i mean like that because you must know the industry themselves undermine the idea of what it means to be a, a photographer. oh yeah definitely you know what i mean so we have to bring back that culture by also informing our photographers on how to how to be raised from business acumen point of view from producing the work to see what is the bar where is the bar are you are you setting the bar low are you a local dude or you want to be an international dude <laughs> you know why is it that when you go to cape town they still flying in international photographers they're not using us and we yes, it's called season you know it's, it's sorry it's called season in cape town right yeah so uh, between the periods of of uh what is july into november it's called season all the models they even fly down to cape town everyone goes down to cape town because they are shooting for all the international work wow for the sub for the sum or for, for the su- for summer their international summer camp- campaigns international oh, wow. so, so they use cape town as, sure. as as their as their base why is it i mean we we can produce same qu- same gear same lighting yeah same location but the photographer is different why is that and it's not because they're cheaper <laughs> that's what damn sure is because we're not producing the quality of work that can compete on that market on the, at that level it's it's great for mzanzi magic we can get us there for it right it's mm-hmm. great it's great for like boom mzanzi magic they can get us for for a good 20,000 whatever and then from there we produce it you know or or like uh, you know etv for these te- but it, are we giving those same people Zanzi Magic and Netflix are we giving them the quality of work that globally they also we we can say yo it stands out I think I mean pan african I think yeah definitely we sure. when it comes to the rest of africa I think photography we we're starting to like fight our position because Ghana Nigeria I mean when you when you sit down with those if you sit down with like a Michael Oboya which I got to sit down with in in Ghana and you you see even when i sit with him that guy is not popping bottles bro yeah when i was sitting with that dude we were having water bro like that guy is not about that life 
these people are just so minded about producing work. They're not worried about driving Ferraris or Porsches or none of that. And I mean, you must know that Michael Oboya, when you open Lightroom, that's his images on Lightroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shucks. Why are we not there yet? That's so interesting. I mean, the questions or the point that you're making here has a lot to do with a lot of self-reflection on ourselves to say, am I producing the work that I really am charging for? Yeah. And, and what am I doing this for, really? Like, am mm-hmm. I just trying to be popular? Yeah. And look, if that's, your, if that's what you're trying to do, good for you. But what happens is, like you say now, the photography industry gets damaged by some degree mm. if we don't have educated people in the industry. Uh, people are just taking in money, popping bottles, but not preserving the industry itself. An it, example mm-hmm. I have on that is literally the, exactly that. I mean, you know, we... A lot of us just want to get booked and get booked and get booked, but yeah. we don't even, just because we're going to shoot celebrities, in fact. People who are just going to shoot celebrities. And look, not to say the celebrity work doesn't have any meaning or doesn't have any uh, depth in it, but you often find that the guys that are shooting in those kind of fields that are not even concentrating like that, as you're mm. saying, fall out. I want to ask, um, I want to say this. Your work delves into like a lot of authenticity and human experiences. Yes. Can you share an encounter where your work went beyond just you taking a photo, but it meant way more than that for you? Um, definitely. I think, you know, this body of this body of work, there's, I've got uh, a series of work called Everything Must Fall, you know. Um, I think that is going to be my claim to fame from 20 years from now. Yeah, I, I exhibited um, the first, 10% of it, you know, um, but I'm, it's an ongoing body of work because in order for you to stay sharp as a content producer, you need to shoot your own body of work. That's okay. your number one. I'll, if if there's one thing I want you to walk away from this podcast l- understanding is that what makes you and the, pers- the, the voice that you are is based on that body of work that you're working on your own. When you don't have those jobs come in, when you don't have all these things, this body of work that you are going to be remembered for, and you're constantly sharpening your your perspective through this, you know. So, the in this in this series, um, I did in one of the the pillars of of everything must fall. There's a pillar called the fees must fall movement, you know, which I covered in for seven weeks, which is an ongoing struggle. You know, so everything must fall is part of obviously the the fallest movement, which is a youth youth um, sh- the youth struggle of South Africa. I think um, a lot of us aren't using our content and our tools of trade to actually make the true difference in our country, because all of this doesn't mean nothing for me. You know, sure. like if it's not there to change how we effectively just operate as individuals, how we see each other, images can do that. Sure. Introducing Colorspace, a stock photo platform dedicated to showcasing images of black people. Whether you're a professional photographer or you just know your way around a smartphone, sign up, submit your photos and start earning through your creativity. Visit www.colorspace.co.za Images can evoke the way in which you you communicate with somebody else. You know, you see God in other people based on 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 an image. You know, so so with with that said, I did this body of work, and I remember shooting over the shoulder of of um, of police officers. So the perspective was because the police officer, I, I, you know, after. After a couple of days shooting this this march, you know this this up in I, the fees must fall the march. Fall march. I remember taking fo- photographs or making photographs of of cops, and then one day an ex girlfriend of mine called me and said, "Yo, that's my cousin, who's a cop, holding a gun, and he wanted he also struggled to get into school. Then he became an ambulance man." Then from an ambulance, working on the ambulance, then he became a cop, and now standing on the other side of, uh, of, of, of the gate, keeping kids out yeah. of, of free education. And what I did was I turned my camera onto the confused 
the conflict, the, the facial conflict, or the the, the 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 unspoken conflict that you saw on people's faces, sure. you know, who are standing on the other side, the gatekeepers, you know, and that that was a personal that was that was a huge thing for me because, you know, I also questioned myself at some point, you know, would I also end up being the disgruntled way, yeah. at the fact that Nikon doesn't choose me as one of their photographers as, or Canon or food. You know what I mean? Like, why are they, they're always overlooking <laughs> the, what I end up becoming now, the same person who stands on the other side of the gate and keeping other black people out, you know? Mm. And that is an important thing. I mean, gatekeeping can happen too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's exactly why I started Nga Twaizi. Nga Twaizi was purely based on the idea that if I'm going to be on the other gate, if I'm going to hold the gate and I'm going to be considered a legend and all of these things, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how much I price, yeah. how I price the way I price. What What is the my business matrix that got me from living in in, in a one bedroom in, in a, or homeless in my car to now in a two bedroom flat in center? Yeah. What, what is what are the business acronyms that can make that that a possibility for anybody and everybody? Because my 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 theory is, if I train my next competitor, that means I'm gonna have to be smarter. Oh yeah. I have to be faster. Yeah. You know, and on top of it, if 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 I'm training my next competitor, that means that our our quality of work is only growing. Sure. You know? I really love that, man. You seem like collaboration is a thing for you. Yeah. What does collaboration mean to you generally? A collaboration just means, you know, it is the death death of ego and the rebirth of 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 a of a visual pers- perspective that you can inspire you aspire to, you know. Because you know what happens when you collaborate with people you f- you have to you you're not you don't bring that ego into the room you're not out saying hey i want to collaborate with you but when uh, it's like that's why i stopped shooting rappers because they used to say come let's shoot let's shoot um let's shoot some work then he'll tell you how he wants to pose yeah when you tell him <laughs> pose like this you tell yeah. him, ah, i don't know that one yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which one is this which one, one is this one? <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and it's hard, it's hard to shoot somebody like that. Yeah. Especially, you know, you know who was like that was AKA for me. Yo, <laughs> I remember shooting his album covers and like head honcho stuff. They would always ask for me, and like Nick and them, they would always ask me to go and shoot his stuff. And, um, hey, the minute, <laughs> the minute you tell that guy to face this way, you tell you, eh, that's not my side. And the super mega <laughs> says no. <laughs> and he wasn't even super mega at that oh, time. That time. Oh, shucks, okay. <laughs> but I can, yeah. I can definitely hear what you're saying about, you know, you know, somebody hiring you and then they want a different style and so forth. Yeah. But it's important to keep your style. I want to ask this, man. Instagram is like super saturated and social media generally is super saturated. Mm. How do you get people to delve deeper into your work? Because when I look at your work, your work doesn't deserve just a quick scroll, that three second thing they talk about must catch mm-hmm. your attention kind of thing. When you put work out, I stop and I look. Because that's, I think, you know, I've now gotten to a point where also subject matter works. Subject matter is very important. Sure. Um, I think um, when it is, if you are going to, if you are going to approach a subject matter that everyone else has done, what can you do differently? You know, um, there's one thing just trying, you know, finding, finding your perspective. You know, I, I take six to seven, if not a year and a half hitting my head against the wall trying to figure out my new perspective like it takes me a while like recently i've been i feel like i'm producing the same stuff you know um but before that i was also feeling like i was producing the same stuff and then i had to i had to like travel to ghana um to understand skin tone you know like things like things that that you have to you have to really feed into the the understanding of what it is that you're trying to narrate in your story yeah are you are you just trying to be another copycat or are you trying to bring something new to the table if you are going to be a copycat then 
you know, I I don't know what to tell you because I don't I can't speak for you. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> but but I can definitely speak for for somebody that 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 is trying to understand their voice. You know that that understands that photography or you know is is the is the tool. You know, it's like I'm speaking to another saxophonist. You know, like I, I can I can't tell you about. Uh, I'm a piano. <laughs> you know, I can you tell you about yeah. about uh, the, the the saxophone. But, sure. Uh, in this case, you know, you know, photography is exactly like that for me. Photography is like jazz with with, with a with a camera. You know, it's <laughs> about composition. It's about timing. It's about lighting. It's um, knowing when to when to take that shot. To, to press that button. To press that button. How do you? Because there's a sometimes you could be clicking a the the shutter but you're missing the moment and you don't understand why you know there's you look at the image you're like oh, you know but does it really give you that goosebumps to say damn this this is really encompassed my concept my idea my my belief my you know the 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 extension of myself into this image you know this is this is what i pour into that and to get there you don't you don't just go from from uh, Spotify greasy, yeah. one night and then <laughs> you decide to yeah. start shooting. You know, <laughs> you you have to cultivate and understand. Go and hang out and and go to library books. Go into archives. Look up. Look at um, legends, black legends that have done this before you. So you yeah. can you can understand that. Okay, you're not creating anything new. You know what you're doing now is you're amplifying now. Sure, and not know? replicating and it. Not replicating. Yeah, no. So we we're just talking about like Instagram and how to get your work outgoing and how to yes. get people to stop and look at your work properly. Yeah. I wanna ask her how, or rather, photography can also shed light on some social issues, right? Yes. Um, are there any specific social themes or causes that you're so passionate about? And I say this because. I'm looking at the work that you did with EFF recently. Yes. Um, it got a lot of controversy. It went all the way around the world. Yes. And somehow it has some cause or issue around it. Yes, yes. Um, so, yeah. Are there any specific social themes or... So, so ideally, the work that I'm, I'm all about is, you know, obviously our struggles as, as Africans. Because I, I honestly still think that there's... We're not completely emancipated. If we were, you know, we would. I think the the type of life that our forefathers we're just continuing the work that our the previous generation has done for us. Sure. You know? I think that that is the important part about being African, is that that what your your father your mother was doing prior to for you to exist. You are continuing their legacy in order for you to truly believe in ancestral belief system. That I, this is my personal belief. I believe in practicing people's lives instead of trying to uh, celebrate their lives, but practicing their life is what they what they want for sure. for for their for their spirit to live longer. You know, it, it doesn't have to have a name to it, but it definitely has to have an action to it. You know? So a lot of the causes that I've the causes that I've chosen was based on the fact that these are all pieces to puzzles that they still want to see on that heaven on earth. You know? Yeah, and that's what I'm doing. So some of the causes is like you spoke EFF, but there's creative development, which is um, around um, um, health organizations. That's where I originally started was. Uh, health organization I think making a difference there having having your work have an effect on communities and way in which it gets uh, they are told yeah. is truly what because I initially just like you I started as a celebrity photographer I remember working at SABC doing all the TV shows then got a big bag and then I decided you know what I don't want to be known as a as a as a celebrity photographer because I fe- felt like it was very shallow and 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 one dimensional you know because what then after being known as a celebrity photographer and then what happens then you're going to be one of thousands of others that fo- follow because sure. celebrities die and the new celebrities are born for sure so every time who yeah cared, <laughs> who cared about that last for one sure, yeah. you know what I mean? so what what is it that you want your work to do 
you know you have to ask that question so i took that money of that bag of mine and i ended up living in the philippines lived in dubai for a bit trying to figure out myself then i realized that i didn't have to travel all that way to find myself yeah you know i could actually just go home and practice who i am there and that's what i did and that's what i'm continuously doing right now but i still travel as much as i can because i think that is the true um th- that is the the edge that i have over over most of my competitors I mean, a lot of them still stuck in joburg they sure. still stay in joburg it's still that's in the club no i mean th- when i say club some of them don't even go to clubs sure. but all they do every day is just live and breathe this side i mean i personally i shot a lot of international campaigns and i i felt like i was robbing a lot of my clients because sure. i don't even know the nuances of the client the countries that they've because then when you go and see your work in a kenya or you know nairobi and and, and these places you realize that your work looks like stock for photo- f- photographs yeah it doesn't look authentic why yeah. it's because you've missed all the nuances yeah for sure it's know? just like a get this person put them here okay cool it's this looks good penis enlargement internet, poster yeah. in the middle of town yeah <laughs> like <laughs> well, you know you don't even care much about it but yeah, yeah you saw it it made you laugh but yeah, it's not nothing that you can go back in home and say yo that <coughs> that there was a, a leo jason f- photograph and that's what we all want we all want that when someone identifies they can identify your image immediately and go okay cool wow that's that's Cyril's work over there i can see him from far away from a mile away you can see from that lighting technique immediately that this this is a, this is is Katlejo's is work you know what i mean like sure. that's that's what that you want but a lot of the time a lot of guys end up getting caught in this joba grad race thinking that this is the beginning and the end of when you go when when it's time to go that side and introduce yourself you're now falling the the, the crowd rest, yeah you in know? the many more the rest of the people i really understand it man and it's so important to create your own signature your work has had its own signature for years whether you're doing double exposure whether you're doing um I, like all these crazy yeah. things that you do then it with a beautiful and they tell a story your work like i said you stop and you think about it mm. i want to ask and just segue a little bit what's your view on mental health uh, or wealth mental wellness rather for creatives and artists big man big 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 look don't get me wrong like every every artist i mean everyone is suffering suffers from the because we're emotional beings huh? um a lot of our work stems from a lot of our work stems from our inner just inner working that's happening you know initially i used to utilize relationships to to help me produce work so i would, yeah. I would literally induce a my partner to either break up with me or like do some crazy so stuff that you me. can then i would take that sadness and then i would go and produce a body of work sure and that was that was the way i thought and was so toxic you know um but then the older you get and the re- the more you you try and uh, identify this this thing that the scratch that you have for for creating waking up and uh shooting off something is when i just realized that there are there are better ways to go about doing it um i had a situation in mlazi actually um i was shooting for a health organization around covid uh or no the the vaccination the vaccine and uh we almost got robbed a j section guy am lazy and yeah. you know the thing is i'm from i'm from a hood also yeah in, you know in, in in cape town and you know man figure when i got to to am lazy i want to go and buy a cigarette like a loose jaw and i was there with my assistant and um and obviously we we always le- hear about him like okay malum cook cat is yeah. a friend of mine you know i mean we didn't think it's all that i thought it was just i thought it was bougie i mean yeah. if you look at the hills and how the houses are you're like damn this is nice views you guys live on the hill it's the dream it's the dream i mean yeah. you know these are prime property <laughs> 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 which is true i think i still think it's lush it's beautiful it's yeah, that side the scenery is amazing Jay's man actually. um and I, when we got there, this guy passed us, took 
I mean, I went to him buy the cigarette, and then he said to my assistant, "I didn't even hear him well because you know it was just I was just more concentrating on trying to compose and and when I was getting into my 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 thing, but I just needed to to like breathe, right? Then anyway, we end up getting robbed there in in Mlas, but we didn't get robbed. Fortunately, my assistant ran with a beauty dish through the hills oh, there. Hey, we were seven guys trying to uh, bum rush us. Yeah. Anyway. Then um, we ended up, uh, I ended up going to trauma counseling. And because of that, that's, that's also I understood the, the science behind what, what it means to like go into um, unpacking your trauma. Yeah. You know, and how to unpack your trauma correctly. Sure. How can you utilize this energy? Because trauma is something that you can't forget. You know, It's something that you have to live with something that you have to con it's constantly there but the difference is that every time it comes up it either brings it either brings positive or brings negative for sure how do you harness the positive outcome from that coming up you know and that's what that's that's what what drove my understanding around mental health and how important it is then the other part is also how do you function well with good especially under our our circumstances because yeah. sometimes clients don't pay you on time sure you know sometimes um all of your dreams are coming true but you know everything else under the carpet is, is being yeah. pulled, you know for sure um how do you deal with that correctly and and your relationship especially if you're you're black and you're a photographer you know um the one thing that you always get is undermined for you sure, know, straight up from the beginning, right? From parents first, you know, sometimes even family, family yeah, you know, yeah. that is a huge one, you know. So fighting through that and then fighting for your own dream and then still trying to reassure yourself that you are on the right path is some, sometimes a, 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 a struggle, especially when the money is not there, you know. And you're sleeping on someone's couch. Um, you're sleeping on someone's couch and you... Or you you not you don't have a, um, money to pay rent, you know, um, and they want to kick you out. And you think about selling your cameras. Yeah. Man, there's many a times where I was just like, you know, you know, this photography thing can kiss my ass, man. I'm I'm out. I'm done. You know. I'm done, you know? Um, I, I remember once trying to commit suicide in du Dubai on on the twentieth floor, and it was weird. So here I am about to string myself up, and I'm like, but. How? Why would I want to commit myself in such a bougie ass place? So then you go home. <laughs> Let me just go home and try and rethink <laughs> everything else, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, look, that's such an important moment to share, mm. right? Because that's such a. Um, I would. I don't know. I don't know. I can't find the right words for it. But but thank you for sharing that too, because we all deal with different situations and yeah. all find our own ways to deal with this you know mental health mental wellness and i'm so glad that you shared your stories and it's probably not even it right that you know the, yeah, yeah, of the mental that. battles and i wanted to ask about you know um imposter syndrome but just because of time i think ashcom is coming for us here yeah. um i want to ask what do you think it takes to be at the top of what you do sacrifice 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 you know people always take that word so lightly you know um sacrifice sacrificing the idea of feeding into your ego ego that's a lot of you know a lot of what and patience because remember if you're in the game of archiving that means that that shit might not even be hot right now yeah you know what i mean like no one is seeing it like i remember I, I remember being in Paris for Afropunk when I was shooting there and people were celebrating me as this international photographer. Back at home, I was just like, no one, you know, when guys see you, they don't even care. Yeah. But then out in Paris, you're like, hey, but I should be living in Paris. You sure, know, yeah. Fuck this place. But, but they just showed that the reason why they celebrated you is because you were doing what you, you loved where you are. And yeah. that's what people are attracted to. You know? For sure. So... So definitely, when it comes to um, w when it comes to being on the top of the, your game, I think sacrifice is, is the number one thing. A constant belief system, um, you know, a belief system helps you break away from your reality. 
because if you if you believe in God and and, and you believe in ans- and your ancestors and what is meant for you and it be- it helps you also start believing in yourself a bit more um you know a lot of the time we fail to find love for ourselves because all we're trying to do is find love for others you know mm. and the, the 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 number one thing is you know is to feed into yourself first before you can feed into others for sure um that that will save your ass a lot and just like i said patience because i know the hot the moment things are going to be really great for me is when it's really bad my friend sure now i mean when you threatening to take clients onto social media or like you're thinking of quitting everything in order for you to ex- experience an extreme positive you have to ex- experience like a ex- extreme negative it's unfortunate it's As, like the yin and the yang type of thing i hate it man i hate cuz i thought it was like a black thing you know what i mean yeah. like are we being conditioned to think as black people that we so hey see us up always 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 made us up hey, yeah <laughs> but why then <laughs> but and i always thought but maybe it's like we've been always brought up with this because we've been brought up with positive reinforcement sure. reinforcement we've been brought up with you know uh, tough times <laughs> that made us you know yeah. and used as examples for others that so we can point and say look at that guy you know but you know if if i look at tape lomoko and i was a good friend of mine I mean we saw him in immense health now fucking four years ago was it four five years ago he got knocked over by a car you remember yeah, that I remember that, that guy well. was in hospital that guy yeah. was about to die and his career was supposedly over over yeah he turned that into a hero story you know and that's unf- that's that's what we celebrate as uh, as Africans and that's African excellence was you know the ac- African excellence isn't I came from a very wealthy family and I still keep making money. Yeah. <laughs> Not like that. No. <laughs> those those are American Donald Trump stories, you yeah. know. They get celebrated there, but you know, we want we we need a, a you know from we want to hear because it's tough in our environment. It's tough where we come from. We need stories like that to keep us going, you know. Love that man. Jason I really enjoyed this and I feel like we don't have enough time. Oh, man, there's man. so many questions I want to ask you mm-hmm. specifically because I did say that you know for me it was to give you flowers yes um, I remember the first time I met you was in Santon we we're doing work for Mini Cooper shit yeah Mini Cooper you uh, either you were doing oh, work for no, Mini Cooper no the booth the, the booth, booth yes, oh, yeah, you were doing, yes, you were doing yes. in the booth there and I remember because I, you know inspired me and I, I can't remember the question I asked you but I'll never forget you Mm-hmm. for how you engaged with me you literally mm-hmm. told me what i needed to hear we made yeah, yeah i think that's how we made yeah because i know there was a bunch of cele- no when you you were shooting oh, oh, what's the name i can't remember who i was shooting when that you day. W- w- i oh, no 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 you i was either with tibs or i can't oh, who would it was it with tibs no yeah yeah possibly yeah. that day was the tips because it was fashion week it was fashion week it was yeah. fashion week with mini cooper they gave us that little they gave me that low booth yeah and that's where i practiced a lot of my fo- my double exposure and it made sense there you know a lot that, of people appreciated it there. for sure i got I, mean, i probably have that photo mm-hmm. in archives that you took on there because one of the mm-hmm. things was like this is here's a guy that i admire so much let me go get a photo number one mm-hmm. and then number two let me ask him a question and the way we engaged ever since mm-hmm. that day i think i followed you and then you followed me and we like literally mm-hmm. um went on but really really amazing from you brother i really appreciate you thank you um the show is literally for me to give you flowers i know it's not physical oh, flowers man. but this is physical man you know you as much as like you said archiving each other's stories is important man like yeah. this what you're doing right now is is exactly that you know a lot of people take for granted what this means for now yeah but you know i i always think about the 20 30 years from now when you know my my kids kids look back and or not even my kids but if another photographer if another photographer looks back and they look at you know your 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 contribution to the community what is that and they can actually physically see that i mean i just came from the art museum the african museum out in in newtown like you know um what's that uh, ernest cole 
yeah. Ernest Cole is one of the most underrated, uncelebrated photographer, and there's many of them, not just Ernest, sure, yeah. Peter Magoban, all of these guys. Oh, yeah. Peter Magoban gets celebrated more, but then you've got like other living legends that are currently amongst us, you know, and they're not getting celebrated. The reason why is because they didn't have platforms of this nature sure. to archive and, and document that, that, that story. So definitely kudos to you for this and i you know i, I really wish you well and strength for this for 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 this initiative really thank you so much brother yeah. we have a tradition on this podcast before i let you go yeah. so the tradition is please could you leave words of encouragement or mm. a question for our next guest you don't know who the guest is the guest doesn't know you either so when you when they see the question or when i read them out to them they won't know it comes from okay so i'll do both uh, words of inspiration i definitely would advise any person who is anyone who to go through the 21 days of abundance uh, it's a, a deepak chopra um meditation thing um that will really unlock what breathing and how to breathe through your problems come from i think it's very important breathing definitely is like one of the key ways to deal with your 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 adversities sure then a question for for the next guest just to give you a bit of a background our guests are all in the creative field by the way cool yeah i mean this one is going to be simple um the next what okay what would what would what are they doing tomorrow that will change their community what are they doing tomorrow to change their community with the tools that they have thank you so much for that question we'll definitely have it in archive thank you. and the advice too thank jason you. thank you so much for coming to b-roll conversations oh, man, i hope everybody good. else who's watching this episode sub- subscribes to the to the show of course but most yes. more than anything follows your work and start engaging with your work and learn a thing or two uh, you've inspired me and i hope that it can inspire someone else Oh man, thank you very much, Biro. Uh, you know, viva, viva Biro. <laughs> you know, I definitely long live Biro. Uh, you know, you know, I'm I'm very political when it comes to the, my views on this, but definitely I I hope that it touches exactly the hearts and the souls of the people that you can't even imagine. Um, for for everybody that that has worked on this, the camera guys behind the camera, um, I I wish you guys well. Thank Honestly. you so much. Sure. Introducing Color Space, a stock photo platform dedicated to showcasing images of black people. Whether you're a professional photographer or you just know your way around a smartphone, sign up, submit your photos, and start earning through your creativity. Visit www.colorspace.co.za.